So it's no secret that I'm a huge fan of Lush skincare. I've been using their products and a variety of their products for five plus years, um, especially when it comes to skincare. I've always been really attracted to the brand's products because they're all handmade, they're made with fresh ingredients, and I honestly just like the way that they make my skin feel. But I don't think I've ever exclusively and religiously just used one skincare system, like the entire range, and I'm talking like cleanser, moisturizer, makeup remover, lip balm, anything that goes on my face, I've never dedicated all of my products just to one brand. So I thought for the next month, I'd try out using entirely Lush skincare, everything that goes on my face to taking off makeup off my face um, I'm gonna just use Lush products now why am I doing this what am I looking to achieve by doing this well I find my skin although it's definitely not nowhere near as acne prone as it used to be I struggled with my skin kind of my whole teenagerhood teenager teenagerhood is that a word no it can't be a word um, all throughout my teenage years I've struggled with acne and skin problems and now that I feel like I'm at a place where my acne is under control I've definitely been struggling with dryness and I mean, I get like dryness in weird areas and I'm oily still on my nose. It's very like inconsistent across the board. And also I do travel a lot. So going on planes and all that, I feel like my skin not only breaks out, but gets super dehydrated. And whenever I go to see like a dermatologist or get a facial, they're like, Jacqueline, your skin is very dehydrated. And I'm like, girl, I'm drinking two liters of water a day. Like what else can I do? I'm moisturizing morning and night. I'm just, I'm trying all the things, but my skin still has some issues. I mean, it also doesn't help the fact that I live in Toronto, Canada, where it's super cold right now and you just go outside and it feels like there's sharp daggers hitting your face. That could also be a factor. I'm basically just hoping that I will have super supple baby soft skin who, you know, wakes up as naturally flawless and doesn't need to wear foundation or concealer or lay around five pounds of makeup like I normally do. Um, but that's a long stretch. I don't want to set too too high and unrealistic of expectations but i'm definitely excited to document kind of if my skin transforms or if i have any noticeable differences in my skin so uh let's hop out of this perfectly lit bedroom and without any makeup on so you can see what my skin actually looks like without all this stuff on it okay so i just kind of want to walk you through my current skincare drawer and show you guys like all the products that i use um, the different types of brands and just things like that that way you guys kind of have a reference with where i'm starting from so these two kind of buckets here are my main skincare things. So I have a bunch of different brands like Dermalogica, um, Laneige. Is that how I say that brand? I never know. Um, there's some Glam Glow stuff. Obviously, I've got a bunch of Lush. Uh, Clinique makeup remover, Charlotte Tilbury. I think this is Drunk Elephant. There's Moroccan Oil, Tarte, Kiehl's, Body Shop, Nivea. I think that's pretty much it. So I'm clearly no stranger to Lush skincare, but I obviously do use that in combination with a ton of other products. I would say that Dermalogica is probably my second most used skincare brand other than Lush, but I'm always mixing things up and using different products kind of depending on my needs. Okay, so here is the official Lush skincare lineup. For the next 30 days, these are the only products I'm going to be using in terms of skincare. So let me quickly walk you through them. So we've got Herbalism here. Herbalism is a daily cleanser, so this will be my morning and night face wash. I've also got Celestial, which is my tried and true. This is a product that I use every day already. This is just my favorite moisturizer. It's filled with tons of soothing ingredients like oats inside and almonds. Then I also have a toner for days where I'm feeling like I want a little extra something. I've also got a spot treatment here. This one's called Grease Lightning. Now this is in case of an emergency if I get some pimples popping up. Normally in the past, I would use a salicylic acid from The Ordinary, but I feel like this is gonna be a much gentler alternative. I remember using this back in the day, but I haven't used this in a while. I've also got an eye cream here. This is the Enchanted Eye Cream, which I have used before, but again, haven't used it in a while. And I normally only like to wear eye creams at night before I go to bed. Then I've got Ultra Bland here, which this is actually a makeup remover. So it's kind of like a cleansing balm. Let me see if I can open this with one hand. So it's basically this thick kind of cleansing balm, which once you heat it up in your hand, it kind of turns into an oil. And I love using oils to break down my makeup, especially when I have a full face of foundation on. Then I've got Ocean Salt here, which will be like my weekly scrub. It's an exfoliant, so it's definitely not something you want to use every single day. But about once or twice a week when I do want to, you know, get in there with a better exfoliant, I'm going to go for this. Then for days when I'm feeling like masking, I've got the Mask of Magnum into here. Again, this isn't something that I'm going to be using every single day, but like on a self-care Sunday when I go for a bubble bath, um, I'll definitely pop on this face mask. And then I've got some lip products back here. This is a lip scrub. This one is called Mint Juleps, and it's got tons of peppermint oil inside. So it's definitely very refreshing. And then I've got some lip balms here. I had to pick two because I'm a huge lip balm junkie, so I wanted to have some options. This first one here is called Rose Lollipop, and this is more of a lightweight lip balm. It's not as heavy duty. So for more of like a daytime lip balm, I thought this would be good. Then for nights where I really want to marinate in a heavy duty lip balm, I've got Honey Trap here. And this one is known for being a little more rich, a little more buttery. So I thought if my lips are getting a little extra chapped or, you know, at nighttime if I want something a bit heavier, I could go for this one. So that is the official lineup. These are all the products that I'll be using for 30 days. Let's get to it. 
So it is very wild Friday night in the Forbes household tonight. I'm staying in, I'm having a bath, I'm gonna do a little face mask. Sometimes I feel like face masks are more of just like a mental thing for me. It kind of calms me down. I feel like I'm treating myself even if it doesn't even really do anything for my skin. But uh, this face mask, I actually have been using this one for years, so I know that it does do something on top of just making me feel pampered. This here is the Mask of Magnum and Tea. Now I used to have horrible acne, and this is the one face mask that I would use religiously. I am ready to pamper myself. So this face mask is really good for pulling out any impurities in the skin. It does have a clay base, so it will kind of dry down a little bit, but it's not gonna get completely solid and like crunchy feeling but it's gonna be really good for helping refine any pores, pull out any impurities. I find I really like to use this when I've been like, say wearing a lot of makeup in the week or if I've been like sweating a ton or just kind of feel like my skin needs a little declaw. Ooh, I can already feel it though. There's a ton of peppermint oil in here. So it's kind of like, I don't wanna say tingly on your skin, but it definitely feels like it kind of wakes up your skin and energizes it, if that makes any sense. So I always like to go uh, very generous with the application. My rule of thumb for a face mask is that you shouldn't be able to see any skin underneath. There are little scrubby bits of ground up azuki beans in here, which are really good to kind of help exfoliate your skin. So when I wash this off, normally after about like 15 minutes it's been sitting on, I'll rinse it off with a bit of water and kind of like massage my skin as I'm doing it. So I get a gentle exfoliation as well. For some reason, the skin around like the corners of my nostrils and like on my nose, it always gets so dry there. So I'm hoping this will kind of like buff it away. Okay, so now that I'm officially feeling like Shrek, I'm gonna go in the bath, leave this on for about 15 minutes, and then gently wash it off. Make me have perfect skin, please. Oh, we going full out with the Lush products tonight, guys. Okay, so I just got out of the bath. My skin looks quite red, which honestly is not very surprising to me. I have very sensitive like skin. I can like touch it and it will go red. So this isn't alarming to me, but I understand why some of you guys might be alarmed. Um, I'm just gonna follow up with my moisturizer. I'm using Celestial, obviously this is my fave. So I'm just gonna apply this all over the face. It's like I'm going to bed and I am kind of pampering myself a little more tonight. I am gonna do the eye cream as well. Might as well go all out. So I'm just gonna put like, half a pump, I find one pump of this is just too much. And then you know what all the beauty gurus say, apply it on your ring finger because that's the weakest finger. So you won't pull on your under eyes and get wrinkles because we cannot age, you know? We must stay looking 16 forever. Just kidding, obviously. I think aging is something that we should celebrate, but not something that we hear or see often enough in the media, but that's a whole other problem. Another video, another day. So I'm just gonna, Pop that on, feeling fresh. Good morning, so I just woke up and my skin actually feels really good. It feels a lot more mattified than normal. And I think that's really just because like the clay mask kind of, you know, pulls some of the oils out. So it doesn't feel dry by any means, but it definitely feels less like, I don't know, sometimes I wake up and my skin's a little oily and it definitely does not feel like that, but it looks really even in tone. So I'm happy I got no complaints. <laughs> So this is mildly annoying. I'm kind of questioning why I ever mess with my skincare routine. Just because, I mean, I should have expected it. Whenever you kind of change up your skincare routine, people always say that you should kind of give your skin like a week or two to kind of adjust and like balance out. And normally your skin gets worse before it gets better. And I think I'm kind of in that phase right now. I just realized, I thought my skin was doing completely fine this morning. I don't think I had any pimples, but now it's like 10 o'clock. I'm just getting ready for bed. I noticed that I have like, little pimples kind of emerging. Now I guess the problem right now is that I don't really know exactly what product it is or if it's just like the switch of the routine overall, but that's kind of annoying. But I mean, other than the pimples, the actual like texture of my skin, it does feel a lot better. It definitely feels a lot more hydrated and less like patchy. Like even I notice when foundation's going on, it doesn't kind of collect around my nose and around the dry spots as much. It seems a lot like better overall. Honestly though, if Jacqueline three years ago would have heard me complaining about two baby pimples on my face, I would have been like, what are you talking about? Because I was completely riddled with acne and um, struggling with my skin at the time. So the fact that I only have a few pimples right now, I know it's not the end of the world, but <laughs> just kind of annoying because I did not have these this morning, but I'm just keeping it real for you guys. Hmm, very interesting. Oh, this could have been because I ate like five cookies yesterday. This is the thing with skin too. It's like, of course, topically what you put on it matters. But also if I'm eating very poorly, 
my skin is the first telltale sign of it because I will wake up with breakouts. So that maybe makes more sense. Maybe it's because I was eating so bad last night. Maybe it's a combo of the two. We will never know. This video is just a compilation of me <laughs> in bed. Okay, so it's the next day and I woke up and I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of impressed. So I put on the tea tree grease lightning treatment, which is kind of like a spot treatment. It's got tea tree and aloe vera, very like calming and soothing ingredients inside. So I put like a little dollop of it on my blemish on my chin, on my nose. You can kind of see like the residue. It makes it kind of like crust over. Can you see that? Since it's kind of like a jelly texture, it dries down kind of weird. I also put it on like a little spot there and a little spot I could kind of tell was forming over there. Um, but basically, I don't know if you can tell, the redness from the nose spot is virtually gone. It's definitely a lot flatter. Whereas this one down here, I don't think it necessarily got any smaller or less red. But this one, I can kind of tell it's one of those like hormonal cystic under the skin breakout so there's not much you can do topically for those you just kind of got to let your skin do its thing with those but i'm actually really impressed with um the nose pimple she's basically gone i honestly can't explain how much i love a good lip scrub i feel like it truly changes the game it just you know exfoliates with the dead skin keeps your lips looking plump except my problem that i kind of ran into at the beginning of this week was overdoing the lip scrub. I've been doing it too much, which I know I shouldn't be doing it like every other day, but I was because I just love this product. But since I wasn't keeping up with applying enough lip balm afterwards, it kind of dried out my lips a little bit. So that's definitely something to be conscious of when using lip scrubs. Don't over exfoliate like I've been doing, but I haven't used it in about three or four days now, and I think could use a little lip scrub. People always ask, <laughs> I don't wanna eat this. People always ask how to use a lip scrub. And basically what I always say is apply, you know, a pea-sized amount on your finger and almost scrub your lips as if you're brushing your teeth. Not too vigorous that it hurts, but you should definitely feel like a gentle buff, you know? And then you can either lick it off or rinse it off. I kind of have a complex with licking off my lip scrubs just because I feel like I'm eating all the dead skin that I just scrubbed off, so I never do that. But the lip scrubs are edible, so if you need a little snack, I mean, go to town. I'm not here to judge. And then I'm just gonna follow up with a little Rose Lollipop lip balm. One thing I have to say about Lush lip balms, I hate how they all come in like a pot like this, like a little tin. I would way prefer if they came in like a stick formula just because it kind of gets messy and if I have like a lotion on my hands, I can't really open it. And then sometimes the tins get dented and they don't close properly, so that's a little annoying. But I do like the actual product inside, it's just getting to the product sometimes. Okay, I think my lips, I got lip balm everywhere. I think my lips are feeling nice and plump, rehydrated, refreshed, ready for the day. So I've just been sitting here doing some emails and some work for the past few hours and my lips are distractingly dry. I've decided it must be because I've been over scrubbing them, but I also feel like the moisturizers, the lip moisturizer that I knew, the lip moisturizer, the lip balm that I normally use is a lot richer. I normally use the Bite Agave Lip Mask, which is like a thick, like almost honey type of film that goes over your lips. And I get very chapped lips, so I just like like to marinate in that stuff. So I feel like the Lush lip balm that I've been using, the Rose Lollipop one, just isn't rich enough. I feel like it's like a bit almost like an oil on my lips, which is nice if you like a lighter lip balm. But I think for what I need right now, honey needs like a thick slather of moisturization and protection. And my lips just aren't that right now. They look like very crusty. Can you? Oh my god. Yeah, they look very crusty. That is not great. I can't lie. I'm very tempted to go put on my Bite Agave lip mask. But I'm not gonna break the spree. I'm gonna go grab, I'm gonna grab the Honey Trap lip balm. That one's a bit thicker, and I'll see if that one does the trick. I love the smell of this one. It smells so good to me. This lip balm definitely feels more moisturizing, but it still doesn't feel like the level that I'm used to compared to the Bite Agave lip mask, but we'll see if this uh, helps it out. Actually, it does already feel a bit better. It is week four. I'm gonna sit down and do my makeup and talk to you guys about how my skin is feeling and how my skin is doing. So I feel like my skin has definitely kind of, you know, adjusted to the routine a bit better. I don't have as many little like breakouts. 
I'm still kind of dealing with the aftermath of that chin pimple, but for the rest of the face, it's not looking too bad. So this morning I was just out running some errands and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to kind of show you how I like to use a toner. So this toner here, this is the Aroma Water one and this has a ton of rose water inside, lavender, very calming and soothing ingredients, which is great because I'm very sensitive and my skin gets very red and flushed very easily. I mean, obviously if I aggressively jab myself in the face like that, it will get red. But um, this is really nice because I feel like it does kind of help like soothe and just breathe down the redness of my skin so I like to use this it's kind of in two different ways one I like to put this in the fridge and say for example I just came back from like a hot and sweaty workout and I'm feeling like a little gross um, or if it's like a hot day and I just kind of want to refresh my face I'll kind of take this out of the fridge and just give myself a little mist I feel like it just kind of refreshes my face and it honestly just feels really good to do but then another way that I like to use this is to actually take it with a little cotton pad and then I just kind of spray the product directly on there so if it was like a day like today where I'm wearing no makeup, but it's kind of halfway through the day and now I'm doing my makeup, but I don't want to like fully wash my face again. I'll just put a bunch on here and then I just kind of wipe over the areas where I tend to get a bit more oily, which is more like my T-zone and then on the sides of my nose here. I like to do my chin too. And I feel like this kind of helps wipe away any like dirt or like physical debris that got on my skin from just kind of being out in the world. I mean, you know, I live in the city. The world's a dirty place. So this just kind of makes me feel like my skin is kind of prepped and ready to go, especially if I'm about to apply a full face of makeup. Oh my god, I'm not kidding. You can see like a bit of discoloration on there. That's so gross. Oh, that was on my face. Okay, so now I feel like at least I'm working with a cleaner base that's ready for a full face of makeup. So one thing for sure that I've noticed since switching my skincare routine to all Lush products is that the texture, like the surface layer of my skin is so soft. And then I feel like that just has kind of a ripple effect on the rest of my skincare and makeup wearing life in the sense that my makeup just goes on so much smoother. And I feel like, especially if you're wearing a more like medium to full coverage foundation, if the actual base and like texture of your skin is not ideal, there's no amount or opacity of makeup that you can layer on that will fix that texture. It will just almost make it show more. So I find where I can really notice a difference is when I am wearing more of a medium coverage foundation and my skin still looks so soft and not cakey. And I really think that is because of the texture of my skin. The foundation that I'm gonna wear today is the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. I mean, I guess I could have done like a full Lush makeup routine. I guess that would have made sense. If you guys do wanna see a full updated Lush makeup range kind of tutorial or video on that, let me know, cause I can definitely do that. I also really wanted to make a point during this video to show you guys actual close-ups of my skin and in environments like without controlled perfect lighting because honestly there's nothing I find more frustrating when I'm watching a skincare routine video or like a skincare video and these people have amazing lighting, they have like filters on their skin to make their skin look perfect. As much as I can appreciate how beautiful that looks visually, I think there is a big importance in showing what real skin looks like without filters and um, just you know up close and personal. So. So I hope you guys can um, appreciate that because I don't think we see enough real skin these days. I'm trying to use a lot of long wearing waterproof products today because I wanna show you how effective or how not effective the Lush makeup remover is um, when I take it all off. I did not come here to play. I'm doing some black eyeliner in the waterline as well. Whew. Okay, so this is a finished makeup look. Honestly, I feel like the texture of my skin just looks so good considering how many layers of makeup I just put on. Um, it definitely doesn't look cakey. Let me get you nice and zoomed in here. I mean, obviously keep in mind that you are super zoomed into my face, but for the most part, you can't really see a lot of the makeup sitting actually on top of my skin. It doesn't look too cakey. But even like around the nose area, normally you can kind of see like a buildup of product or like powder or just like dry patchy skin and I feel like honestly the texture of my skin looks so much healthier and just um and just really so much better so definitely I'm very happy with at least like the suppleness and like baby smooth texture of my skin if that makes any sense yay for using lots of product with natural oils inside honestly I remember there was a time especially when I was acne prone where I was so terrified of oil I thought that was gonna make my acne worse and just be so awful for my skin but one thing that I definitely have learned is that no matter what your skin type is like you don't necessarily need to be afraid of oils if you neglect to put any oils on your skin your skin kind of overcompensates and produces more oils and then it just gets oilier so even if you do have oilier skin I definitely would say don't be afraid of cleansing balms and cleansing oils or just moisturizers that are a bit more rich just because I feel like sometimes your skin can benefit from it. I will see you guys later tonight and show you how I take all this stuff off. Hello, okay, let's take all this makeup off. 
Um, so it has been a nice long full day and I'm ready to just wash my face and get all the stuff off it. So before this little 30 day trial, what I would normally do is use a waterproof eye makeup remover and then use a cleansing oil all over my skin. Lush doesn't really offer like just like a liquid eye makeup remover. So really the only product that made sense was Ultra Blend, their facial cleanser, which is what they recommend to remove makeup. So it definitely is a very rich and balmy texture. It's like, it's very thick. Do you see what I'm saying? Anyways, if you don't like the feeling of very buttery, rich oils on your face, you will definitely hate this product. I actually kind of like the feeling of being like a little grease ball, but I can see how some people might not like this product. So basically, I warm this up in my hands and then basically just put it all over my face. So I really work this product into my skin. I probably spend like a good, good minute or two just kind of massaging it in every single you know, crevice of my face to make sure I get all my makeup off. And I'm not gonna lie, although, you know, I don't mind the balmy feeling, this isn't the most glamorous I've ever looked. So I'm just gonna really rub this into my eyelashes, trying to get off all this product. So now the next thing that you wanna do is kind of rinse what you can off with water, but I recommend also taking a hot cloth and kind of wiping away the excess. Since this is a very oily product, obviously water is not gonna mix the best with it, so there's always this phase, and it's the phase that I'm in right now, where it just feels like you've got honey all over your skin, and it's never gonna come off. But a hot cloth definitely saves the day. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so one thing that I've noticed since using Ultra Blend and my makeup remover is that I feel like I have to put more effort into taking off my makeup at night. Like it's definitely a bit more of a journey to get your face completely clean. But what I do really like about it is that it actually leaves like a beautiful kind of balmy feeling to your skin. I wouldn't say oily, but it definitely feels just very like plump and supple. It's not stripping at all. So if you notice that after you use a makeup wipe or after you cleanse your skin at night, it feels kind of dry and tight and stripped. This product makes your skin feel the exact opposite. I feel like this is a good option for me on days where I'm just kind of wearing like a tinted moisturizer or like a really light layer of makeup. But when I'm wearing like a heavy full glam like I was, I'd honestly just rather use something like my Dermalogica pre-cleanse or my Shu Yamera cleansing oils, which I feel like are a bit quicker. So I always like to do a double cleanse. So after I'm done taking off my makeup, I go in with my regular face cleanser, which is herbalism. This is what I use morning and night without fail. Even if I'm wearing makeup or not, I always cleanse with this. This is a really interesting product because it's actually like a solid face cleanser. So it's like this crazy green color. And what you actually do is add a bit of water to your palm, mix it together and it becomes a paste. And then you use that to clean your skin. So see, I'm gonna mix it kind of together like this. And then it kind of just turns into this crazy neon green color. So I'm just gonna put this all over my skin. This does smell a little insane. There's actually vinegar in here. So it kind of smells like salad dressing or like salt and vinegar chips. But this product is absolutely amazing, especially if you are more acne prone like me. And I'm actually pretty sure the ingredient in here that makes this product so green is chlorophyll. Like, you know, the thing that makes leaves change colors. Now you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure chlorophyll is an ingredient that helps even out your skin tone and keep your tone nice and balanced, which is something that I'm definitely after. I really do like the texture of this though because there's tons of little ground up bits of almonds inside. So it's gonna kind of give you a gentle exfoliation, but definitely nothing too harsh for every day. Okay, time to rinse it off. Okay, and then to finish off my nighttime skincare routine, I've got Celestial here. I actually think I've been using this moisturizer for probably like four years straight, something like that. Honestly, one of my favorite feelings in life is when I have all of my skincare on and I can just lay in bed and marinate and just become one. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so as of yesterday, it has officially been 30 days. We made it through. I honestly am a little surprised that they didn't like cheat or sub any other products out because for me to use like the exact same products for 30 days straight, that's kind of like an accomplishment within itself. So personally, I've uh, really impressed myself, but on top of that, honestly, I have to admit that my skin is feeling really good. There definitely are a ton of products that I know I will keep using because I do love them and I was using them prior to this little experiment. Like for example, my daily cleanser Herbalism and Celestial, my favorite moisturizer, you guys know that. Um, I obviously will keep up using because I love them, but there are products like the lip balm and the cleansing balm for makeup remover that I feel like the older products that I were using were more effective. 
um, so I would prefer to use those on a daily basis but overall honestly I'm pretty happy my skin feels really good I think also just consistency in terms of a skincare routine is so effective in making your skin feel good which I mean seems like a no-brainer but I feel like before doing this there were some times when I would get out of the shower and my skin would feel really tight or it would just be more inflamed and a bit more red and um, I have to say all the products were very calming and very soothing to my skin and um, that was something that I was really happy with. So overall, I'm definitely very happy that I did this 30 day challenge and I definitely would encourage a lot of you guys to go out and try Lush Skin Care if you haven't before. There are obviously a huge variety of products for different skin needs and what your skin type is and how you like your skin to feel. So even if like I like certain products, they may not be perfect for you. So I would definitely recommend going into the stores and like trying them on and that's my favorite part, just going into the stores and like sampling and smelling and feeling and really kind of personalizing your skincare because I think that's something that a lot of people forget about is that skincare isn't really like a one size fits all approach I understand how it's very easy to kind of like get lumped into boxes and you're like oh I have oily skin I need to be using these products and I have sensitive skin so I need to use these products I just think that's a very archaic way about navigating skincare because we all have such different needs like I was saying earlier I get oily in some spots but I still prefer my skin to feel supple and hydrated and I don't like when it feels tight and kind of dry and completely stripped of all its oils whereas some people who are super oily might like the feeling of having no residue on their skin so it's definitely important to keep in mind that everyone has different skin needs and different skin preferences but honestly it just feels so good to be at a place where i feel happy with my skin and it just feels good i don't really know what else to say other than i'm just like honestly very happy um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down below in the comments if you've tried any lush skin here before or what your experience has been with it if it worked out for you if it didn't um, and yeah, let me know if there's any new products that you guys are excited to check out from Lush. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Turn on the post notifications, do all the things, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye!